Welcome to the uh, bunker for our Extra Points KDLT Sports video blog. This is sports director and host of Calling All Sports, Mark Ovenden. I'm Zach Borg, and get right into it. I know we're still a couple of days away from March, but uh, the madness kind of begins early for all of us. Uh, a lot of high school tournaments are actually already underway or have been. Uh, it'll really start to ramp up this week with uh, college basketball tournaments starting around the region, but still a little bit of regular season play and uh, the biggest rivalry in our state. Uh, it renewed itself on the women's side earlier this week with SDSU beating USD 77-67. We'll maybe touch on that in a second, but uh, the regular season finale for the men is coming up on Saturday. That's SDSU at USD. A lot on the line for both teams in this game. A recap of that first game. Uh, it was a crazy one up in Frost about a month ago when the Coyotes got out to a 20-point lead oh, and the Jacks come back on like a 28-2 run and ended up winning by 14. Uh, the regular season finale, the Jacks can win the conference title or at least share it, depending on what North Dakota State, who they're tied with, does out at Oral Roberts. The Coyotes, who also have a game before that against Denver, uh, could actually get as high as the third place, which when you think about what Craig Smith's done in his first year is, is incredible, and they could at least have a winning season for the first time in a few years. Um, a lot on the line, and it's a rivalry game. It should be kind of fun. Do you need me to talk? <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying sorry. to set the scene yeah, for you. Yeah, I know. I, you, I, I agree with you. There is a lot at stake. Uh, and USD's playing really well now. Uh, that loss to North Dakota State really seemed to shake them up, up in Fargo. Yeah. They lost 71-47, to 47 and they've, been, uh, they've won some big games on the road. Ironically, they've not been that great of a home team all year long. They've been a better road team almost than home especially within the conference. So uh, that that's an area where I think they're, they're, they play their final four games at home. And they've won two so far. Yeah, they've won two, so they're starting to get a little bit of a feel for home. And you got to remember, they, they played a lot of games away yeah. from the Dome at the beginning of the season. And, you know, so uh, hopefully they're peaking at the right time for their sake as they take the floor at, at, uh, at the Dome on Saturday against the Jackrabbits. But, boy, the Jacks are playing awfully well. They wrapped up a perfect record at home. They they Be have the kind of home record that you want to have yeah. and they And they beat their Summit League opponents by an average yeah, of 22, 22 a points game. a game. That's that's dominant. Uh, shockingly dominant actually. For a team that was only picked to finish 4th in the league, so it's not like they had the Nate Walters and, and you right. knew this was the preeminent favorite. They they killed everybody and they had, and that was after some pretty near miss losses at home to some less than good teams like North Dakota and Idaho in the in the non-conference. Right. Well, it, it should be a it should be a really good matchup uh, with South Dakota State at USD. Like I said, the Coyotes are playing a lot better for Craig Smith, uh, and they and they lost five in a row to start the season on right. the road. And of those five, there were three of them that went to overtime that they could have won. So their record could be a lot better than it is. Uh, it's not, but it could be, and they're playing much better now than they were in the beginning. And I alluded to it as well, the uh, the women's game just took place uh, on last Saturday. Uh, you had the Jackrabbits winning seven. It basically, it looked a lot like the first game, very close, and as AJ said, could have come down to just a couple buckets here or there. Uh, they had Megan Watashik back, which helped. Uh, USD could clinch a title. Maybe SDSU could get back into it. I know we're coming up on the tournament, but do you still think the regular season titles matter to these teams? There's, there's an automatic bid to the NIT if you don't win the tournament, but I know it's not the D2 era, but I still got to think it matters to these guys to win a title. Oh, I think any I think any title that you can win, regular season title or whatever, is important to a team. That's always going to be the first goal is to win your conference, and then to win your conference tournament would be the next goal. To get to the NCAA would be the next goal, and take it from there uh, so I think it is important especially when your arch rival is the one yeah. that you're neck and neck with on the so women's it side makes it even better if uh, for whoever you know whether it's the SDSU men or the USD women who are both somewhat in the driver's seat right now mm -hmm. USD women in particular they're you know they've got a game up in the loss column over South Dakota State so if they win the rest of their games they're the, they're right, the, they're the regular season, regular season champs. champs as far as seeding for the tournament ah. Eh, doesn't make a bit of difference if you're one or two, really. I, well, I, I do disagree on that point just because you get that extra day off. on, And I don't think, I know the only women's team I think that's done it that went one three in three days was USD last year. Right. On the men's side, I 
correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think anybody's ever done three in three days. They've always had at least that one little break, or last year there was the bye week. So there's a slight advantage to being the top seed for sure. But I, I as USD proved last year, if you're right. playing well and you've got good depth, I don't think it really matters. Well, the Summit League tournament starts a week from Saturday. Uh, we could have looks like we're going to have three of the four area teams, and the USD men will probably play on Sunday. Uh, that's for next week. We got a lot of college basketball tournaments starting in this region on Wednesday. Uh, let's start with the NSIC. On the men's side, uh, you've got Augustana at home against Bemidji State. Northern State is at home against Sioux Falls, and SMSU is out at St. Cloud. Um, Augustana is just coming off their second loss. They lost at Winona. Uh, what do you think as we get into this NSIC tournament? Right now, Augustana and Northern are in, a, in the top spot and good spot to make the regionals, but maybe Augie needs this now to host. Yeah, they do, and I, you know, we had Paul Sather on the show on Calling All Sports on Monday, and, you know, they don't feel like they're automatically in the region right. tournament. If they should lose their first game, to the USF. Uh, and, and that that's it, that could cost them dearly. So uh, they're definitely looking to take it taking advantage of their huge home court advantage they have at the Barnett Center where they lead Division II in attendance yeah. every year. Um, and and the fans there really are great. I and a lot of Aberdeen highlights fans, of both games, by the way, on Wednesday. Aberdeen fans are, are tremendous fans for both high school and for college. And I think they feel like they that's a game they absolutely need to win um, to potentially get in that region tournament, regardless of what happens in the NSIC. So. Uh, the same thing would happen, you know, the, the, it's the Northern women are on the bubble, too, yep. so they need to keep on winning. Augustana's women need some things to happen to get into the regional. Yep. They, they were 10th in the, the last, last region, and, and Northern was 8th. Right, yep. and eight teams get in. Uh, and, yeah, I think Augustana has to win the NSIC tournament to host the region because if they don't win it, chances are they'll be losing to Moorhead and that would put Moorhead in the driver's seat to host the regional, although it's still a bid process. And on the women's side, as you were kind of alluding to, it it actually looks identical to last year's NSIC tournament because you've got Northern, the North Division champion, hosting Southwest Minnesota State, although Southwest actually upset them earlier this year yeah, in, in Marshall. I, I, yeah. that, was a, that was a crazy one. And they had no wins at the time. No, they had, they had no wins Two at the wins, time I they think, beat yeah. Augie. They were, they were winless, I think, when they yeah. beat Augustana. And Augie is going to... beat Augie and yeah. Northern, which makes... Augie is hosting as well, so you're going to have double headers at the Barnett Center and the arena. And on the women's side, it could be Augie and Northern for the second straight year in the second round if they both advance to the Pentagon. And also the USF women are out at uh, St. Cloud. They could end up playing Wayne State again in a rematch of that game where Bailey Bauman hit the Crazy. buzzer beater that went Keep all over shot. the place. Yeah. So again, uh, the, all those games are on Wednesday, and then it moves. Uh, the women's tournament begins at the Pentagon on Saturday, the men's on Sunday, and then they go for a couple days. We also have the NAIA tournaments beginning. The GPAC starts on Wednesday at well at on-campus sites. The whole tournament's on-campus sites. Highest seed in any of the tournaments is on the men's side with Dakota Wesleyan, who are the two seed. Uh, they're opening up with Concordia. Midlands, the or, uh, they morning, lost, they morning lost side's the, the number they one. They lost the yeah. coin flip. Yeah. So... That they lost a coin flip with Morningside. And that's if that ends up being the conference title game, well, that's that would how be... far down it went. You're yeah. right, absolutely. Although they're both going to be in the NAIA tournament, right. so it's not like it could cost them, you know, making the postseason. But yes, it's unfortunate that it came to a coin flip. And uh, there's some other teams too. Dort's in that as a sixth seed on the men's side. On the women's side, Mount Marty, Dakota Wesleyan. And Northwestern, kind of unusually, they're they're actually on the road as a five seed. Not been no, quite the year we expected from them. Mom Marty's a team to watch out for on the women's side. They've uh, they've got some shooters on that team, and they've won some big games. So uh, I I think they're kind of a sleeper. If you want to look for a sleeper in the G Pack tournament, that's who I'm going to call as my sleeper is the uh, Mom Marty women. Well, we will find out. Uh, North Star tournament also begins a little bit of it begins on Wednesday, but most of that happens on Thursday. Uh, the presentation and Dakota State men are actually the two and three seeds. Yep. Dakota State actually uh, had a share of the conference title. Um, pretty good chance. I mean, Dakota State's had a nice run the last couple of years with Gary Garner, although I don't think we thought of them being that good this year. They got off to a rough start. They've kind of rebounded nicely. And, and presentation, I They've mean. They've had a good year. Presentation has, yes, absolutely. So, I mean, do we think – I, I'm not quite sure how that works, too, because I think they have to... I don't know if you win that conference title if you go to the NAIA tournament or if that's an automatic I bid. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, we'll have a lot of fun with that, and that'll, again, first round for that Thursday, then they go to Saturday for the second round and championships. Uh, also, busy time, as we've said, for high school. The state wrestling tournaments begin. We'll have our first ever state tournament at the Premier Center, uh, the State A wrestling tournament. The Bs are going to be out in Rapid City. Uh, what do you, any guys you're looking forward to, particular uh, performances, people we want to keep an eye out for this weekend? Um, you know, there's not like any anybody going for their sixth title or something like yeah. there has been in the past. Loudenburg's time time, pretty but, good, though, yeah. Uh, Luke's had a great career, yep. And, uh, of course, he's going to play his college football Wesleyan. at Dakota Wesleyan. Uh, but he's a darn good wrestler as well. Uh, I think on the in the A, I'm just kind of curious to see which team steps forward to win that. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, there's several teams that could win the A, and Sioux Falls at the event center, and uh, what a what a great venue that's been for everything yep. else that's been there. Um, curious to see what it's going to feel like for the state wrestling tournament because when you've got thousands of people in the stands and the spotlight on that mat in the middle and it's yeah. the championship match at whatever weight class and all eyes and attention is focused on that mat, it's a blast. And, of course, the, it starts on Friday. Those championship finals are in the evening on Saturday. I think I heard, I, I'm not sure if this is accurate, I think I heard it on uh, KWSN, uh, it's been since the 70s, since a Sioux Falls school has won the state a, state wrestling championship. I mean, Roosevelt, Aberdeen is the defending champ, they're kind of, I think, the slight favorite. Uh, yeah, Roosevelt had a great right regional, there. though, yeah. they won the region tournament. Roosevelt's right there, I, I, and Brandon Valley won their region right. tournament. Vermillion was right Vermillion's on their still tail. really good. Um, you know, you've got some great wrestlers individually. Regan Bay going to try to defend his and his, title at and 160, Brett. and Brett as well. So, uh, if you got a, if you can get a couple of state champs on your team, yeah, you know, the team that wins is the team that's the deepest in terms of going the farthest. You you could conceivably win a state title without having a bunch of champions. Yeah, as long as you've got placing. a bunch of guys that go far. So the team with the most depth is going to win that. Well, and it's interesting, too, out in the Bs in Rapid City, you got Parkston, who loses arguably the state's best wrestler in Brady Reef, who uh, went to Iowa to start his football career a little early, and yet they're still, I think, pretty well considered to be the handy favorite in that one. Yeah, they're, they've got themselves a dynasty going there. It's pretty impressive. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of the blog, unless you have anything else you want to muse on before we take off. By the way, there are 11,000 people at the uh, yeah. event center on last Saturday night for the wiener dog races, and uh, I took my grandsons. It was a blast. And to have that many people there for a hockey game, um, and they didn't play that well Saturday night, but they won. They're playing really well yep. now. However, we'll... They need to keep it up on the road because they go on a 10-game road trip yeah, because, because of all the tournaments. Of all these tournaments are going on at the event center, wrestling, uh, the Summit League, you name it, uh, the state boys. Basketball, yeah. Uh, it's the end of March before they're back, so um, it's going to be important to see they that are the Stampede good, can keep going. Pretty good spot, though. I think they're four up now on Des Moines for the last playoff spot. They're, pretty, they're not too far back at that third, but... You're right. It's the last time I'm going to say they've had a great year just drawing fans. I know the Wiener Dogs were the, the number one attraction, but still, that was the biggest crowd since opening night. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and and opening night was opening night. Yeah, and it was and they lost. Of, so you talk yeah. about them not playing well. At least they won this well, time. Well, they're playing a lot better now than they were opening night. Uh, they only had four guys back from their team last year. Took them a little while to get it all figured out and create some chemistry. And I really do think uh, Kerry Eads has told us on the radio show in the past that that building was maybe even a little intimidating to them to start with because these guys were all so new. Yeah. They didn't have USHL experience, and all of a sudden to be playing in front of 12,000 people for your first game. I'm sure even the guys who came Holy back were cow. a little. I'm, even the guys right. who came back, I mean, coming right. from the arena to that. But kids that are Ooh. coming from high school. Yeah. Uh, but now that they're used to it and they're playing together and they're gelling, it's flipped. now they can use it as a great advantage yeah. and have the other teams intimidated by it, and I think you're seeing that. Well, I guess we'll find out also. We'll be back next week to start previewing the Summit League tournament. Hopefully we can get uh, 9,000, 10,000 in there for that. Well, that would be a lot of fun. But enjoy the games this week. Uh, for Mark Ovenden, I'm Zach Borg, and we'll talk to you again later.